Welcome. In this video, we're going to run over how to set up a project in Xcode for development with the DJI iOS SDK. A couple good resources to point out before we get started. First being developer.dji.com. If you go to app dev mobile SDK, and then you need to go back to the previous version of working with iOS version four. A lot of good information and API reference here. Second one that's been very useful to me would be the Reese blog. They've taken some of the tutorials, converted them from Objective C to Swift, so you can see them within the blog here. So we'll link to those in the description, but without further ado, we'll get going here. Opening up Xcode, creating a new app. We'll call it iOS example. Swift, hit next, just create it on the desktop. Within the app project, go ahead and choose our iOS version. We'll say iPad only and then landscape. So once again, develop depends on what you're doing, but good opportunity to Edit your project. We're actually going to close it now. Open up terminal. And then navigate to our location. Let's see what we called it again. iOS example Swift. And now we're going to need to create a pod file. So we'll say touch pod file open pod file, find it easier to open in text editor. Terminal will complain sometimes, but makes life easier on my side. We'll go ahead and tell it platform is iOS. And then as we just said, that was version 13.0. Source going to be HTTPS. Cocoa Pods. These frameworks. And now this will be the name of our project. So in our case, iOS example Swift do pod first one's going to be just to show you guys if we go ahead and open up coco pods we can say dji sdk ios and same deal for others so i'll go ahead and save some time here but sdk ios widget faucet database resource and then end We'll save that. You can see here, got pod spec file and site as well. If you'd like to take a look at those, also gives you instructions on how to install Cocoa Pods if you have not worked that with that before. You may also need to update on your computer if it's been a while since you've used Cocoa Pods. But now that we've gone ahead and created that, we'll save it, exit it, and pod install. Hmm. Must have spelled something wrong on the side. Ah, yes, it should be all lowercase. Give another go here. And there we go. We are installing. So now Wallace installs. Go back to Finder. Look at my desktop and after it is now completed when we go in here we'll be able to open up the XC workspace so this is what we're going to be using from now on with our pods so all done with terminal and finder however the next thing we'll need to do is back on the DJI 
developer website. You can log in using your DJ account or create one. Go to the developer center free of charge. And then you'll need to go to apps, create app, mobile SDK. We're using iOS. And we named it iOS example Swift. Bundle identifier. We can come into the project here. Signing in capabilities. Copy and paste that in. Category other, we'll just say educational and create. You'll see it here. So I'll need to go into my email real quick and activate the application. Activate your app. Click on that link. And then I have my app key. So not sharing that here and could create a constants file as well um, for use with that. But just know you'll need the app key here later on. And that's how you go about creating that. So next up here, we're going to go in to our project info to go ahead and add configurations. So first one being is app transport settings. So app transport security settings. And then we need to add one is going to be Allow arbitrary loads and be yes. And then for supported external accessory protocols, once again, we'll need to add to that. And we'll need one two, three, four of those. First one being com.dji.video. Second one being com.dji.protocol. Third one being com.dji.common. And last one being com.dji.logic.link. A few other things. Once again, just trying to take a wide berth here and setting up everything Generally, you may need, so you use Bluetooth connect to the drone. We'll say Bluetooth app. And then next up, a lot of apps you're gonna need some location, so we'll say always and when in use. A tad longer. And then also need the location when in use description. So this one, location to show on map. So think about pilot location or just moving the map to where you're at. Requesting location will probably come up at some point there. And then the last one I'm going to add here is going to be DJI SDK app key. And I'll just pull this off screen for a second to add it on my side. Okay, back here, we'll go over to build settings and then search for header search paths. Double click to open it up and we're gonna go ahead and delete all the paths except for pods, root, 
headers public. So I'll hit the minus button. So backspace and then here. Okay. So now updated the header search pass. Cool. Now that we've set up the settings for the app itself, we'll need to actually register our app. So we're already importing UI kit. We'll go ahead and import DJI SDK. For our class, we'll want to add on DJI SDK manager delegate. And if we go ahead and build our project, we should get a little notification here telling us that we're not conforming to the protocol. Go ahead and fix that. But before I add to those, we'll create a view will appear. And here, call the super class. And then create a new function called register app. In our function for registering the application, really not much right now, but we'll say DJI SDK manager dot register app with self here, conforming to the delegate. And now down here, we have our DJ SDK manager delegate. Mark tool is nice. You can see up here, it'll mark certain areas for you for easy navigation. And now app registered with air, we're gonna check was there an error? Then we'll need to show an alert. So quickly here, let's create something to show alert view with. It'll take a string as the input choose a default alert controller. In that, we're actually going to initialize it with title, not needing one. Message is going to be whatever is passed in. Style, alert. And then we'll need to be able to get out of the alert. So we'll say an action, once again, initializing it, with title being okay. Style, we'll just use default. And then a handler for this as we're just essentially exiting. We'll add that action we just created to the alert. And then we'll need to present the alert when the function is called. Once again, I don't need to do anything with that. So now if we do have an error when trying to register, we'll call show alert view with message and we'll say error with app registration and then error dot <laughs> localized description. So that should give us a description for that. And we're also done. Otherwise, we'll say registration success. And 
you can go ahead and connect to project there. This did upload, ugh, did update database download progress is required with the SDK manager delegate. However, don't really use it. So we'll just say nothing in there. And I'll go ahead and build the project. So essentially here, just conform to SDK manager delegate and making sure we can successfully register here. We then go ahead and connect to the DJI product we can do in a future video. Once again, with the DJI widget, you will see a lot of warnings here on the left side. Let's go ahead and run this on this iPad. And we'll, oh, we're already building. Let it finish that off. And then we'll go ahead and run it. Want we'll to build this first time here. All right. Go ahead and run it on the iPad now. Something that does come up with this is, you know, oftentimes if you have, for example, an iPad and you're trying to do some debugging with the controller, you have to connect your iPad to the computer to run it in a default configuration, but then you also need to connect the iPad to the uh, drone's remote controller, so it can get a bit confusing there. There is a DJI bridge app, but hasn't worked with newer versions of iOS. So what I'll end up doing is when you connect your actual device to Xcode, there's an option to run it uh, without connecting it directly to the computer. You have to connect to the computer the first time, but after that, it's once again a bit finicky sometimes, but I find that to be the best process to run it remotely from the computer and then connect the iPad directly to the drone remote controller on that side. So launching on the iPad here, should have load that up before the video, but hopefully we'll see a nice registration successful here after the application runs. Once again, a few things we can run over in additional videos as well, have the ability to import other items such as the DJI UX SDK and FlySafe database. Essentially, the libraries we imported when using CocoaPod. So we're upside down here, not that it matters too much right now. Running the application and it's gonna, oh, that's popping up on the screen here in regards to successful registration or not. And registration success, great. So that is some tips on how to set up your project initially for development. Thanks.